Hi, everyone. Um, just wait one more moment to give everyone a chance to be called in and join um, <clears throat> our webinar today. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, good afternoon and, and welcome to our webinar, Best Practices in Corporate Philanthropy with Subaru of America. I'll be your host today. Uh, my name is Christine Newman. I'm Senior Manager of Marketing and Communications for Blackboard Corporate Solutions. And joining us today is Sandy Capel, Manager of Corporate Responsibility and Philanthropy for Subaru of America. I'm really excited to have Su uh, Sandy on with us today as she's been really a one-woman show who has done such an amazing job growing um, Subaru's program to make a real difference in their community and with their employees. Today's webinar will be a short um, 30 minutes and with some time for Q&A at the end. Um, but before we get started, I have a few house housekeeping items I'd like to go over. After the webinar, you'll receive an email with a link to this recording. Um, just feel free to download it and forward it on to a friend or a colleague if they couldn't join us today, um, or you know, rewatch um, the great webinar and, and pick up um, you know on, on more of Sandy's hints. Um, We'll also be posting this presentation on our resource hub. Um, so if you haven't had the chance to visit our resource hub, you can do so at corporations.blackbaud.com um, or directly through the Blackbaud website. Um, it's a really great um, resource there, ton of valuable information, um, such as this webinar, past webinars we've done, um, white papers, et cetera, a lot of things that can really help you have a greater impact with your CSR programs. Feel free to use the Q&A widget on your screen at any time if you have questions during the presentation. Uh, we'll be answering all questions at the end of the webinar during the Q&A section. Um, and if we don't get to your question during our time today, we'll make sure to follow up with you um, via email. Um, or if you think of a question afterwards, um, feel free to email us at solutions at blackboard.com and we'll be sure to work with Sandy to, to answer your questions then. And lastly, um, before we begin, um, don't forget um, to join the conversation on social. You can access Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn right here um, during the webinar using the widgets. Um, you just simply log into the social media channel of your choice um, and include us in your post using um, uh, at BlackBodCS um, is our handle, is our Twitter handle. And with that, um, let's get started. Um, so, Sandy, welcome, and, and thank you for for joining us today. Um, so, kind of to start off, I think you know everyone probably knows you know Subaru makes cars, and we've seen um, you know some of the great <laughs> commercials that Subaru puts out um, of you know people taking their dogs on hikes and, and things like that. But you know, tell us a little bit about Subaru of America, you know, really kind of like as a company and why corporate responsibility um, is important and, and how you really work to create and sustain um, a culture of philanthropy across the company. Sure. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Um, as you said, Subaru um, is the importer and marketing arm for Subaru products in the U.S. Majority of our cars that are sold here are actually made in Indiana um, in a zero landfill plant. Um, so um, this year we celebrate 50 years as a company, so in the automotive industry we're fairly young, um, but I think we're very different. Um, the, the love theme that um, permeates everything we do is really who we are. Um, Share the love, and that love theme started as a marketing initiative, but it really became um, everything to the company. It's our guiding philosophy. Um, we value um, the perspective of um, being different. We want to make a difference, and we call ourselves that we're more than a car company. Great. The, uh, uh, go ahead. 
Um, I was just going to go into, you know, the CR um, at Subaru is really in our DNA. We've always done what we do. We just never called it corporate responsibility. Um, And we believe, and it's our guiding culture as well, that we all have a responsibility to make a difference in our local communities. Thanks so much, Sandy. Um, So inspiring. Um, Can you talk a little bit about how the Corporate Responsibility Program um, at Subaru of America has evolved during your tenure? Um, You've, you know, led it for quite some time. Um, What was it like when you took over um, as opposed to today where you've evolved it to? And and what were the drivers to the program's continued evolution? Sure. Um, We, um, this is probably a little out of um, order, but we really engage um, all of our stakeholders in everything we do, from our employees to a very dynamic volunteer program and other opportunities to get involved in philanthropy and other ways, to our retailers, um, to our business partners. You know, we, we bring everybody in through a variety of initiatives. I've listed some here. Um, to show how we engage our employees. We try to empower them. Love, promise, and share the love are important tenants and really go through um, everything that we do. It is really our core. For how I've evolved it, when I started and took over this role, I've been in it for about 25 years, the, um, it looked very different. We never called it CR um, in any form. It was just our giving and volunteer programs. So what you see on the slide here is when we started with a formal CR program, it was really at the request of our parent in Japan, and we became part of a North American contingent with the plant and two other sister companies through Subaru. And it was, we were looking to address and report on eight different tenants. And it was a growing um, opportunity for us. We found very early that a lot of what you see here is already uh, woven into what we do naturally, such as governance and compliance, and we don't call them out. And so through over the years, we ended up going from eight to the three pillars that we have here, our Subaru family, our communities, and our planet. And everything that we do falls very easily into one of these categories. And it's not just what I do, it's what everybody in the company does. Great. Thanks so much. I mean, it's really amazing kind of how you've <clears throat> taken it from from what it was to now really having this really defined um, strategic program. You've mentioned, um, you know, a few times now about the, the Subaru love promise. And, you know, can you talk a little bit more about how that plays into um, your corporate responsibility initiatives um, and, you know, such as grant making and, and employee engagement and how you're really incorporating that um, into your into what you're doing? Sure. The Love Promise actually started as a marketing initiative, and um, it was a way to better involve our retailers in their local communities. All of the Subaru dealers, we call them retailers, are independent companies, and they share our philosophy on giving back. And so uh, the Love Promise started to help them better define what they're doing in their local communities. But it's all under um, the tenets of always do the right thing, period. Um, And that is stressed throughout everything that we do. So the love promise actually has five different tenets, and they're shown here. So on the philanthropy side, everything I do fits very easily into a loves the earth, loves learning, um, whatever it might be. But we also have activities that go on during the course of the year. As you can guess, loves the earth, 
takes place in April, and we celebrate Earth Day through a variety of activities. So, um, and this is done across the, con uh, the country and the company to participate um, and support these initiatives. A big way that we do that is through um, internal activities. And so um, the love promise, we call it the six stars to guide us, has become our corporate culture uh, philosophy. And we have six tenants there. And it's really the guiding um, principles for Subaru employees, how we treat each other, how we treat our community, all of our stakeholders. <clears throat> That's really, really inspiring how you've just been able to wrap that as a company into everything that you're doing. Um, one of the things that, Sandy, you and I have, have had a lot of conversations about is, you know, your commitment to meeting unmet needs in um, the local community um, where Subaru of America is. And can you talk to us um, a bit about that commitment and how you really align your investments to meet those needs um, in a way that makes sense for Subaru and for the communities that you're serving? Sure, and there's different layers of this, just I'm sure like there are at other companies. Um, we have some of our mark calls marketing to share the love, the love promise, which donates a lot of funds. This, for the 2017 program over the past 10 years, we've donated more than $120 million to nonprofits across the country through the Share the Love program. Um, the Subaru of America Foundation is a second giving arm um, with very structured um, guidelines, but we try to not duplicate, but support the Love Promise initiatives. So right now we are really working in employment and employability career um, exploration for young people in the communities where we have offices. Um, our employees are an integral part of everything that we do. And they support, they support all of our initiatives through paid volunteerism. So um, I have here that last year our employees gave more than 5,000 hours. It's actually closer to 6,000. Um, by the time all is said and done, and we probably have about another 20 um, projects there. But we, in everything we do, we look to fill a need and not create programs that we want to do. We know that we can marry our goals with needs in the communities. So a lot of my time is really spent working with community leaders on what are the needs, how can we help to um, impact those. And it may be through some financial support or other support in kind, as well as employee volunteerism. In May of this year, we're moving to new corporate headquarters four miles from where we are now in Camden, New Jersey. Camden is one of the um, poorest cities in the country. And we've always supported Camden through the years. But we've started a new initiative um, about two years ago called Subaru Camden Works. And they are very targeted and strategic investments in the city, um, and since then we've given more than $1.6 million to uh, programs that help mainly youth, but through the areas of um, community vitality uh, and employment training and opportunity. That's great. And why is it so important, um, Sandy, just to kind of follow up on that, why, why is it so important to Subaru that it's making this investment in, in Camden? Well, our philosophy, it's the right thing to do. I mean, I know um, it sounds um, maybe a little contrived, but it's really not. It's very authentic. Um, 
we really do believe we have a responsibility where we live and work. And we try to be good neighbors. And so with Camden, with us moving into the city, we know that we have a lot that we can offer. Um, we do some mentoring, some um, a lot of human capital is put into working with some of the organizations and the youth to um, to show how education and training parlays into a real job. And so it's and even though you know employment and employability is important to everybody, for us. We really think that the strength of the community is equally important. And so, you know, everything that we do really does go into how can we work to make the community better. That's really so great. And um, being from New Jersey myself, I certainly, uh, it's, I, I know the importance of the work that you're doing there and, and how you're working with the community. So I think it's really something that others can um, can learn from as well and, and model after how you're doing things. Um, so kind of um, and Chris, talk I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Chris, can I just add something to that too? I think it's important yeah. to know the community. Um, I've worked in Camden many, many years. So you get a feel for the issues and what's being unmet or what's just the challenges. And I think just understanding um, the, the opportunities and the challenges and where you might be able to come in and make a difference is really important. You know, you just, we're not going in blind in any of the communities where we work. We really do try to get to know um, the issues, what's important, who are the community leaders, you know, we really try to um, work from the ground up. That's so, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's so important that you're really seeing um, you know, yourself as a equal partner in the community and not just coming in there and um, telling them what to do, but seeing the importance of, you know, kind of getting their perspective and, and having their, their input and their partnership. So thank you for sharing that. Um, can we talk a little bit too about kind of how, you know, we've talked um, about how you are engaged in your community, um, all of the engagement with your employees um, and how that's so important. Um, but let's talk a little bit about how technology is helping to support your corporate responsibility efforts and, um, you know, kind of what your grant making and employee volunteering solutions are enabling you to do so that you can, you know, really kind of track your impact and and be able to tell this, these stories um, about what you're doing? Sure. Um, I'm a one-person department um, with an intern. So um, during the evolution of the department, I know what it was like to work with minimal technology. Um, the I'm going to skip ahead on a slide. Um, before I went to online grant making or any of the online portals. Um, I did work with Blackball, but I worked with um, an offline system. And I used to get all of my funding requests in paper. Um, the, you know, at the end of a grant cycle, when everybody was sending their applications, our mail room used to bring my mail on a little flatbed trailer. Um, and I would just line it up around my office, um, definitely not in keeping with our environmental philosophy. Um, but once I moved to an online portal for a lot of our activities, um, it, it made administering it much easier, but it also allowed me to bring in our employees in management roles. For example, when I rolled out Angel Points, um, the volunteer management system in 2016, we more than doubled what we did um, in 2016. And last year we did over 124 events across the country. We're just a company that's 1,100 strong. And I think having everything online allows our employees to access um, the data wherever they are. 
whether it's from their phone, the computer from home. So it just made it easy for them to see what's going on, to um, interact, to record, whatever it might be. It was also instrumental in the evolution of my grant-making program. At Subaru, we work with a contributions committee in all of our locations. We have 15 locations wholly owned across the country. And I use volunteers to help review and direct the grants in different parts of the country. Technology has allowed them to, again, sign on wherever they are, complete whatever they need to do, hit submit, and they're done. The ease with which we can work and expand the programs and just work smarter, um, I, was, I was surprised, actually, um, how much different the online um, environment made it. Um, you know, the same with our matching gifts. We had a huge increase in matching gifts when we went to an online portal versus a paper. Um, and I know paper sounds so archaic now, but, you know, last year we had um, a record um, amount in matching gifts. We did more than 113,000, which is a lot for us, and our average matching gifts number about 650 to 700 a year, and that's going from 200, um, even five years ago. So, um, I'm, you know, everybody's connected, and as you get more millennials into the workplace, that's what they're expecting. They are expecting to be able to connect wherever they are and to connect easily. Um, also, just communications. You know, everybody has an intranet. I don't know how we would operate without an intranet where we could use that as a main portal to share um, not only what we are um, creating and pushing out under CR and, and philanthropy, but having two-way conversations. Um, our intranet allows people to comment, not unlike a Facebook, um, on the post so you can have some exchange. So I don't see today, um, especially for a small office, and I'm probably smaller than most, um, you could not continue to grow your programs if you didn't have a strong technology foundation. Great. Thanks so much, Sandy. Um, and before we get to the – see, we have a, you know, questions coming in um, already, so we'll get to those in, in just a minute. Um, but before we uh, get to that, can you um, – you, know, you just mentioned how um, you really have been able to increase your volunteerism and have so many um, volunteer events. Um, can you just kind of give um, an example of, of that, of, you know, kind of the initiative, volunteer initiatives that you're, you're running, and maybe there's one in um, particular that, that stands out to you? Yeah, the, um, we have a very dynamic volunteer program, and um, we, uh, we create um, the activities for employees to participate. And if it's a Subaru-organized activity, they get paid time to do it. We don't have maximums either. So, um, you know, as long as they have manager approval, they can participate in as many of the activities um, that we offer. We have a, a, a breadth of activities that we do, and we do it through some organized um, initiatives like Love Promise um, and Share the Love. The, for the Love Promise, the five areas, loves le uh, pets, loves learning, we always do volunteer activities. We schedule them that have to do with those areas um, or causes. Also, every year during the Share the Love event, all of our offices across the country volunteer with at least one of our Share the Love partners. And then we have our corporate-wide um, volunteer days that we call legacy days. And we use MLK Day of Services to kick off for that. And they go into March, usually. And what we do is we schedule a multitude of activities, and each of our locations schedule for their own locations. Here at headquarters, we did about a dozen activities. 
So, and we are, I call us a repeat business. Um, we know where our employees like to volunteer. So, you know, I'll use um, a recent habitat as an example. We are currently building our fourth home with Habitat in Camden over the past two years. And with each of the builds, we um, have volunteer days. Um, we have two um, site leaders, volunteers, two women that lead all of our Habitat activities. And last year, I was able to get our three top executives to go out and help build homes. And it was wonderful. It's really hard to get our executives out uh, just from a scheduling standpoint, but I think it's really important for employees to see that the executives feel this is really important, that they will give their own time. And um, they had a great experience. Actually, one of the photos that I used in here was actually Subaru's president writing a message on the framing of one of our homes. Thanks so much for sharing that. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, at Blackboard, we've definitely seen the importance of the executive buying involvement and, and having employees see that, you know, that's being lived, um, that that culture is being lived all the way up to the top. Um, so we have um, some questions. We can open it up to questions, Dan. We have one um, already. Uh, Sandy for you, um, and if anybody else has any questions, you can um, submit those, start submitting those now. Um, so the first question in Sandy is, um, do you just focus on really getting to know the community in Camden, or are you also using that strategy in other locations, such as the plant in Indiana that you mentioned? I think, this, well, the strategies that we employ across the country are different. In Camden, we're making major investments, and it is a complicated city. So it takes a lot of my time to be there and get to know them. I do try to get to know our grantees in other parts of the location, but our employees that actually live and work in those locations really have a better relationship than I do with some of them. Not all of our investments are at the level we're doing in Camden. Um, they are varying, and sometimes they are the, you know, the single grant. Um, but I, I do think it's important, regardless of where you're funding or even how much, to really have a handle on what the needs are in the community, because you want to make sure whatever you're giving really is meeting a need. Um, and I think the only way to do that is for um, you to have an idea of really, you know, what the needs are in that city and how can your investments help move the needle in the right direction. Great. Um, and we have another question that's come in um, as well, um, kind of a, a, a multi-parter here. Um, do you have production staff or are your um, volunteers um, mostly professionals, I guess, you know, kind of office professionals? Um, and um, do you uh, do your volunteering um, throughout the week? Yes. We are um, an office. We don't do any manufacturing at this facility. Um, so we are the sales and marketing arm. The plant in Indiana is our manufacturing plant. So we do, yes, we do have professionals here, and yes, they do volunteer during the week, and they get paid to do it. Okay, great. Um, and are the uh, the plant in Indiana? It sounded like they're then um, kind of uh, those those employees out there are participating and um, arranging some events themselves out in their local community. Yes, and they're a sister company, so they do um, they do very localized um, funding and volunteering, but I don't believe it is at the level that we do, just because okay, it is great. a manufacturing environment. Okay, great. And then I think we have time for maybe one final question here, um, and certainly if, if people have other questions, um, send them through. We'll make sure to to address them after the, the webinar. Um, but how did you um, choose 
how did you um, choose the five tenants of the Subaru uh, Love Promise? The tenants were chosen through a process in marketing, um, but it was really customer facing. Um, we um, still consider ourselves a niche marketer, even though we've had tremendous um, sales success over the past 10 years. Um, but we know who our customers are and what's important to them. And so we try to mirror um, what we do with what we know is important to our customers. Now, there is a lot of synergy, so what's important to our customers is also important to us. So there is um, a marriage of philosophy there. Perfect. Um, and that brings us right at time. Um, so again, if you have any um, other questions there in the audience, please feel free to email us at solutions at blackbaud.com. Um, or if you'd like to learn more um, information, visit our resource hub, uh, corporations.blackbaud.com. Thank you so much, Sandy, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this will conclude our webinar, and hope you have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Thank you for having me.